While this month did not go according to plan at all, I do have a lovely stack of makes right here that I'm super excited to share with you. And so that's what we're going to get into today. We're going to talk about everything that I sewed and knitted in the month of March. And we're going to be starting with knitting. I will have the sewing portion linked in the timestamps below. So if you don't want to watch the knitting content, you can go straight to the sewing content. Otherwise, if you want to watch the whole thing, then stick around and we're going to get into it. So let's start with what I'm wearing. This is the chestnut sweater from Petite Knit. I have been really loving wearing this. This is my first finished object in March. I am really, really into wearing this right now because it's super cozy, but not too heavy. It is definitely warm though. It's a DK weight merino sweater, and I did a few modifications to the pattern that I'll just quickly jump in. So I did modify the neck. It doesn't obviously fold over, and that's what she has in the pattern. I also did twisted rib wherever there is ribbing, so I did it on the cuffs as well as the hem and the neck. I knit everything a little bit shorter than she calls for, and I also didn't do the split hem. So it's, you know, same, same, but different. Overall, I really just liked the drop shoulder construction, and I wanted something with a lot of positive ease. And I definitely got that. Like I said, this is a wardrobe staple that I'm just loving wearing. The only downside is that this lovely merino yarn from John Arbin Textiles pills so easily. I'm gonna try to show you some close-ups because it really is, like, kind of breaking my heart. I only made it at the beginning of the month and I've been wearing it you know somewhat frequently but it shouldn't be really like pilling as badly as it is. But I think even in the camera you can kind of pick up on what's happening here and you know it's easily enough to fix but it's just kind of a bummer that it's happening so soon into me wearing it. So I don't know why that is exactly. I've never actually had a sweater pill this badly. Like you can even see it on the sleeves already. There's obviously some fuzz and stuff but like it's like really quite, it's almost like felting a bit. I don't know. Anyways, I've never had that happen to me before, so I'm a little bit bummed out about it, but I'm really enjoying this sweater in general. I loved knitting with the yarn, and again, it's too bad because I really would like to knit with it again, but if it's gonna do this, it's just really not worth it for me to buy. But it is a lovely yarn that I bought from Loop London when I was in London uh, late last year, and so it feels like a nice little memento. And it's super cozy and, and lovely to wear, and it's kind of exactly what I wanted, and I'm happy to have it in my wardrobe. Next up, I did actually finish this last Last month but I did want to share it with you because I had just finished blocking it and so I didn't have any finished photos and actually I think it was still wet when I was sharing it so this is what it looks like this is my cardigan number seven from my favorite things knitwear and this is Noro silk garden solo held with hobby friends silk mohair and I really love how this turned out I've been wearing this constantly and I added the buttons I wanted to show you they're so cute. I've got, these are the like the main buttons. They are from Core Fabrics and they are recycled paper buttons like cast in resin. And then I put this little flower button that's from my grandmother's stash that she gave me. And then the rest are those same buttons from Core Fabrics. Where is it? There it is. So I'm really, really happy with this. I have been wearing it a lot, like I said. I am definitely on a cardigan kick now, which you will see really soon. I'm just really loving this. I'll show some photos of me wearing it in some outfits because I have been making, I've been probably wearing it at least like a couple times a week. And I will say this has held up a lot better than this one has. And I've probably been wearing them about the same amount, if not more. So I'm gonna put this baby down, but I love her and I'm really, really happy with that cardigan. I will not get into all the details because I did post about it in my last month's roundup. So if you wanna uh, learn more about it, you can head there. But yeah, that's the sweater or cardigan number seven from My Favorite Things Knitwear. Okay, and my, my last knitting finished object is this sock. This is the second sock. I just don't know where the first one is. I finished it, it's just somewhere in the apartment, which I will find soon because we're gonna be moving. So hopefully that will turn up. But this is the basic ribbed sock pattern. I really like this pattern. This sock fits me perfectly. I obviously have not blocked it yet. I don't have sock blockers and I don't really know how important it is. Like this fits me like perfectly right now. Um, and like it definitely could use a little bit of stretching out, but I don't know. I will definitely make this pattern again because it just fits so well everywhere. Like I just love, 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 love how it fit. I really, really loved knitting this sock, uh, even though it took me so long to do it. I cast it on it in January, but I'm really happy with how it turned out. I must say I don't love 
all the colors like I'm not really into this bottom portion of the colors I'm more into this and it does lean a little bit more like masculine to me than like my normal color palette like this kind of suits my color palette but this just doesn't I don't know it's a bit old man like that said I do I will wear them um, they're just definitely like you know they're winter socks anyway so you won't see them that much um, but I'm really happy with it I'm so happy I have my first pair of socks wherever the second one is I have no idea but I will hopefully find it soon because I am packing up my apartment we're just moving a few blocks away actually but I am really excited for that move and I'm like now just kind of going through everything and cleaning up and, and packing and getting things organized so that they are organized when we move uh, because the move is in like such a short span, like a sh such a short distance. Like we're just doing things gradually over the next week or so. So stay tuned for some content around that as I set up my new sewing space and pack things up if I can remember to catch footage of all that. But yeah, this is the basic ribbed sock. This is a self-striping sock from Lazy Lion Yarns. It's their self-striping sock yarn. I think it's just what it's called. I think this colorway was Earth, Water, No Fire or something like that. Um, yeah, I'm not crazy with the colorway, but I do like the sock and I will make this sock again. And now I'm on a sock kick. So I'll get into all of the like works in progress now. Starting with not a sock, but just because it's a little bit easier to access. I've got this guy. So this is what I'm starting to frog of the Ozetta Seasons cardigan. You can kind of see a little bit closer above the yarn and like the texture there. I'm really liking how like this yarn is knitting up. This is Hobby Friends wool. I believe it's a worsted weight. It's nice and like kind of it's like very like a bouncy texture. It feels really nice. To work with i'm enjoying working with it so this is the seasons cardigan and i really after making my last cardigan i'm like i'm ready to make another cardigan and i realized i already had the ozetta seasons cardigan that i bought ages ago so i figured i would make that and i had this yarn that would work that worked really well for it and i will see how it goes i like i said i do have to frog this this band a bit this is like the neck band here but i do have to frog it because i like picked up some stitches wrong but i wanted to show you the texture of this so it's not going to end up looking anything like this really so yes that is one work in progress the next one i have this teensy bit of a sock yeah there we go so this is the wool and wanderlust i believe is the yarn company name in the knit me baby one more time dk so this is a dk sock from 52 weeks of socks i'll open up and show you which one it is it's the riverbed sock from hohi locatelli i think it's really cute it's a shorter sock it is in the dk weight so it will be a bit thicker but it's got an all over sort of lace pattern and i think it'll be really fun to knit up that said, this is my first time reading charts, and it's not like it's a complicated chart, but I'm not, just not used to it, so it is, I'm going to have to, I think, frog back the, the few little rows I did in the chart on this little cuff here, but it is really fun working with DK yarn, like it really does knit up so much faster when you are knitting a DK sock. It is, like it goes by so much quicker, but I didn't have the, the needle size that she called for, so what I ended up doing was making the bigger size, but with my regular sock needles, so... That's this baby. I'm gonna put her down too over here. Okay, and then my last work in progress that I have for knitting is with this yarn. Look at this magical yarn. It is so pretty. I'm gonna try to get it close so you can see it, but it's just really, really, really pretty. This, I'll have to put the, the name of this yarn, but this is going to be a whole cloud bow dress from uh, Pom Pom Magazine, their spring issue from last year. This is a thousand meters in it, or over a thousand meters. And I just can't wait. I'm like, you know, I kind of forgot about this because I was working on it and then I got distracted because it got cold again. But like, look how pretty it is. It, oh, I just love it. And it's gonna be very ethereal, very light for spring. I'm actually, now that I have it picked up, I'm like, I gotta get back to working on this. It is like very quick and satisfying to sew because it's, well, it's knit on big needles. It's knit on US 10, so six millimeter needles. And it's just a single strand of mohair. And so it's been knitting up very quickly. So that will be a project uh, that I'll continue working on in April. And I think that's it. I'm not gonna plan anything else in terms of like cast-ons. 
I think that's everything for the month that I can see myself working on. Who knows what I'll finish. If I can finish the socks, I will be very excited about that. And then hopefully like some, you know, I'll get way, I'll get through the cardigan. And then after I finish that cardigan, I think that will be it for like sweater or heavier knits. And then I'll get into spring knits, but it's just not time yet. I'm not gonna be able to wear anything springy until May. So might as well just wait anyways. Okay, and then if you are here for the sewing portion only, we're gonna get into that now. I have a few finished things that I will show you and then I'll talk about some plans too. I actually did make this last month. This is the Fen shirt from Pattern Fantastique. And I made this for Core Fabrics, or I made it for myself um, working with Core Fabrics because I work with their sister company. It's called a peace silk or airy silk. And it means that the silkworms are not harmed in the process at all. They naturally leave their cocoons. And because of that, it creates this like naturally like slubby texture. Um, it's really, really pretty to work with. I will link the blog post so you can learn all about it. Um, it's really, really interesting. And so I got to make anything that I wanted and I chose this shirt. I will say that I love how this looks on. I love wearing it, but I did not enjoy making it. This fabric is quite, because it's thin or because it's lightweight, it does shift quite a bit. And this pattern has a lot of you know, bias cut pieces. And so it was just kind of a nightmare to combine. I would definitely make something, you know, like a gathered dress or something with this fabric next time uh, if I did work with it again, because it would just, I think, be better to work with rectangles than to work with pieces on the bias. But it also was mostly challenging because I just found this pattern, honestly, like really difficult. Um, the instructions are not that great. They are, I found them quite confusing the way that they are listed out. I found the, the instructions and the illustrations together really lazy to be honest like I just maybe I'm just so used to like indie sewing patterns holding my hand that I'm just really not used to something that's so bare bones but it really was like so bare bones and so I'm you know I was a little disappointed in the pattern it definitely you know and it's so stressful when you're working with like a beautiful expensive fabric and you just really want it to work out and the pattern is so complicated and like unnecessarily complicated for what it is, but the result is beautiful. I love wearing it. I do want to make another one, um, but I am kind of nervous about the construction, to be honest. I think because I've made it already, it will be okay, but I don't know. It was just like unnecessarily challenging. Um, and I might, you know, take some steps and do them my own way because yeah, it just didn't need to be this hard, you know? So this is the Fen shirt. I would say like if you are an experienced shirt maker, you know how to make shirts, you're an advanced sewer, definitely go for it. Otherwise, I think you will probably have a bit of a challenge. Um, hopefully not, but yeah, I don't make a lot of shirts and I found this really challenging, so. There's that. Okay, next sewing finished object is this cutie little skirt. Look how tiny it is. It's adorable. I really love this one, actually. This is the Sage Skirt from Closet Core Patterns from their monthly membership. Just a quick disclaimer that I got the fabric and the pattern for free because I work for the company and this was a little sample that I made up for some photos. So that's all you need to know about that. If you do look at the pattern image, you will say, hey, Cassie, that is dramatically shorter than the pattern images. And I purposely wanted to make a mini dress. So this is actually, the pattern recommends like flowy fabrics. This is a stretch twill. So it has definitely a bit more structure. And so it kind of really shows off that A-line shape, which I'm just, I love that. Is exactly what I wanted with the little slit in the front. I did the high slit, I made a straight size six and essentially just hacked off the bottom. I didn't have even like use the cut line or anything. I just hacked it off kind of where I thought I wanted it to sit. Like I measured, I did the whole like, you know, Catholic school, like hand by your side to see like where the skirt hem should be and basically did that. And ended up a little bit shorter than that, but I think it's super cute. I'm really loving wearing this. I've been wearing it with like tights and a sweater, but I think there's lots of very cute ways to wear this, so. Yes, this is my Closet Core Sage skirt. So I did sew two other things this month. I sewed a skirt for my mom that's currently on its way to her, so you will not be able to see it, but it was the peppermint wrap skirt and it's super, super cute. And then the other thing is a pair of trousers from Mood Fabrics that I made for a friend's partner. And so this is my first time sewing for a man. 
um, or at least sewing like a pair of trousers for a man. And I used a mood pattern, which I didn't really realize at the time. She'd picked the pattern and I agreed, not realizing that the instructions were gonna be so sparse. Like the mood instructions just say like, in like put in the zipper. Okay, thanks mood. Or like install the pockets, but they don't give you any instructions on how to do that. So I had to keep looking up like in my patterns, like where I like a zipper instruction, I had to look up like a pocket instruction. So it took a lot longer than it was supposed to, but I think they turned out really well, but it is really nerve wracking to sew something for someone else as a gift. Like she was giving them to him as a gift and I was, she helped me kind of put them together a little bit and I showed her some of the ropes and you know we did a little trade and it was very very sweet and I was so excited to take on that project but it is very scary sometimes when you sew for someone else you just like really want them to love it and um, it feels very vulnerable or at least for me it felt very vulnerable and so this month only sewing for me uh, I don't know how much time I'll have because well, I don't know if you can hear it in my voice, but I caught COVID, so I am kind of on the mend, but it's still not 100%. And we are moving next week or over the course of the next week or so into our new place. It is uh, our very own home, which I'm really happy about, um, but it's not too far from where we currently live. So the move will be easy, but we are, we are sick, so we're just kind of packing and working our way through all that. So that part is a bit of a bummer, but you know, it is what it is. I am really excited to be in our new place and have some content around my sewing room and how I'm gonna set that up and maybe some like packing and, and footage around all that stuff. So anyway, stay tuned for, for what comes next in terms of all of that, but I do hope to capture it and I'm trying to be better about capturing it. So anyways, that's all very long winded. What am I gonna be making this month? I will tell you a little bit about it, but I won't get too deep in because I did just make a whole spring plan video and it's essentially gonna be that video. I do have plans to finish my Helene jeans. I had mentioned that I wanted to start them in the last episode and I had started them, but I had actually started them like months ago and I didn't even realize. And so I just kind of added a little bit more to them and then I've now put them on rest. Um, because I remembered that I had to make trousers for my friend's partner and that took precedent. So I will hopefully get to those sometime this month after I set up my sewing room. Like I said, I don't think it'll be too challenging to do all that because the move is not so major, but you never know how things go. Um, I didn't expect for this month to go the way that it did, but you know, that's okay. And I would like to get started on making a dress for a wedding that I have to go to in May. I have the fabric already and I am I'm very excited to make the dress. I initially was going to make a skirt with this, but I think I have decided it's going to be a dress for this wedding. I think I'm going to do the Sicily slip dress. It has a lovely like cowl and very pretty back. I'm not normally a cowl person, but I think with this fabric it just will work. Uh, and so that is just what it's going to be. I am kind of nervous about sewing with this fabric because it is quite slinky but I just know it's going to be so worth it when I finish it so yeah very happy about that upcoming project and then I, oh, I don't know why I feel always feel like I have to add so much like jeans and a slip dress are a lot to make but I'm going to add one more thing and it will be a button-up shirt either another Fen shirt or the Genra shirt from Daughter Judy Patterns. I have some really beautiful shirting fabric that I cannot wait to get into. So that is kind of creeping up on my list. Those are the three things that I'm planning for April. If you want to learn more about my spring sewing plans, click this video right here. I talked all about what I'm planning on making this spring, my spring capsule wardrobe. So click here and you can go to that video. Otherwise, if you did like this video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. And if you would like more of this kind of content, then subscribe to my channel because I post every week. I'll see you next time. Bye!